Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me join the other speakers in welcoming all our dignitaries today. Um, Mr. CS, it's a pleasure to have you um, grace our, our, our morning today and open this, this event. Um, PS, again, your engagement in the sector is greatly appreciated. We thank you for all your support and your, of today's event. And Mr. CAS, it's uh, always a pleasure to see you um, in, involved in our sector and, and looking after our interests. So, so thank you, everyone. Uh, also extend a uh, good morning to everyone out there. Uh, number from the diplomatic corps that I see in front of me. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure once again for BASE to be here um, presenting, sponsoring the event, um, and to tell the BASE story from Kuala. On the screen, you can see um, just an overview uh, of our plant, our offices and plant with the ore body, mined out ore body in the background. And let me take you on a little journey on what's been happening over the last 12 months or so. So financial year 2018 was a very positive year for BASE. Um, top of that list, you'll see a statistic that we are exceptionally proud of. Um, we, have had, we have a fantastic safety record. We've now worked over 14 million hours uh, without a lost time injury. A lot of effort goes into ensuring a safe culture and a safe workplace down at base. And this is something that not only base, but uh, Kenya can be exceptionally proud of. It's a statistic that you will not see much anywhere in the world. Uh, all mined, just over 11 million tonnes from last year. We actually underwent a, an upgrade to the front end of our process throughout the last 12 months, um, which will see that all grey increase um, over the next 12 months to about between 80 and 20 million tonnes, getting the throughput up. You can see our production figures, Ilmenite, Rutal and Zircon, um, which combined for total exports of 600,000 tonnes. Um, we understand that makes us the largest exporter by tonnage through the port of Mombasa. Um, and we had an export value of uh, close to 20 billion shillings last year. Uh, those figures all amount to the fact that BASE represents 65% of Kenya's mining industry. Okay, so we're a big component. Um, again, we're very proud of the fact that we are playing such a positive role. As statistics then, going back to the construction phase, uh, it was a 26 billion shilling investment. Um, and what we're talking through with these statistics here is the impact that BASE is having in building a mining economy throughout Kenya. So you can see through construction, close to 10 billion shillings were spent on Kenyan contractors to build. A few years ago, we asked Ernest and Young to do a, an assessment of the wider impacts that the project was having on the economy. Um, and while we directly employ between 700 and 800 people on the mine site, the flow on effects of that employment through the supply chain and indirect jobs was another 1,400 jobs being supported um, and induced jobs. Um, as a result of consumer spending from our employees and the indirect employees creates another 1,400 jobs um, across the economy. Um, we're working very hard to build um, a local supply chain. Um, you can see the statistics there, close to 80% of our annual purchases are spent with Kenyan consumers. That fluctuates a little bit when we have uh, big infrastructure work to do or the upgrades that we recently had which required imports, but on the whole we're working very hard not just to source things uh, from the Kenyan suppliers, but really working with local suppliers um, down in Kuala to build their capacity to ensure that they can enjoy the economic benefits of the project. Uh, the study from Ernst & Young uh, estimated that the project would pay approximately 23 billion in government revenue um, over the life of mine and would contribute close to 100 billion shillings um, in GDP. Um, no mean feat. Um, the final statistic down the bottom there, um, again, is something I'll talk about a little bit later, but um, the community work that our team at BASE is doing is something we're exceptionally proud of. To date, we spent just over 1.5 billion um, on our four key areas, being uh, social infrastructure, livelihood enhancement, health and education. Now, the success, of, the success of BASE would not be possible without the many partnerships um, that we have developed and we have. Um, obviously, we are a key stakeholder of the Government of Kenya through the Ministry of Mining and Petroleum, um, and we work with them very closely um, to promote investment in Kenya. Kenya sent a, um, a delegation off to Australia um, in August this year to attend the Africa Down Under Conference, which gave them a chance to pitch the opportunities that we're all hearing about this week. 
Um, Vision 2030, um, again, Base is very proud of the fact that we are officially accredited as a flagship project, um, and that adds to our visibility and also to Kenya's um, development objectives. Um, communities are obviously exceptionally important, and again, I'll talk to those a little bit more um, in just a minute, but obviously enhancing livelihoods, ensuring that our communities are left in a better place um, with more opportunities um, than when we started once the project's finished is, obviously, is a key driver. And clearly, as we heard this morning in the session, the breakfast session, building your relationships with your county um, is exceptionally important for the success of the project. And we're very proud to partner with them um, in the delivery of uh, health programs and investment in Kuala's health infrastructure. Just quickly, another um, very positive impact from the project is what we call the legacy infrastructure. So what you see on the screen in front of you is infrastructure that was required by the project, built by the project, um, the dam facility, the camp, uh, which we used to house workers during the construction phase, um, the mine access road, the port facility, and the power line. Now we refer to these as legacy infrastructure. They're an investment of uh, six billion shillings by the company, um, but they will all remain well long, long after mining is completed to be used. Um, for the development of Kenya and Kwale um, in the years to come. On the previous slide, we saw a uh, reference to the Big Four Agenda, um, the, theme of, the theme of our week this week. While not directly linked to the Big Four Agenda or identified in the Big Four Agenda, um, the industry really believes that we have a strong role to play. Now, one of the key things is to achieving uh, the Big Four Agenda is obviously having a, um, a skilled uh, workforce and a lot of investment goes into um, base investing in its people, um, providing training opportunities. Some of them are listed there. The graduate program's up and running, the internship program, the apprenticeship program, um, and exposing uh, high school students to the opportunities that are available within the sector so they can, they can direct their future studies um, towards potential employment. Um, you can see that um, in the last financial year, over 60,000 hours of training were undertaken at Base Titanium, ensuring that transfer. Um, obviously, a key output of all that training is a move away from imported labour um, to local labour. Base has a very um, active and progressive um, policy in place to try and identify um, workers from our immediate community. Um, prioritising those people most impacted. Now the, the graph you can see, the table you can see there just shows a bit of a snapshot from when we um, started mining in February 2014 through to November 2018 and the shift in where the labour has come from and it really demonstrates a move towards um, both labour from Kuala um, and from Kenya with um, quite markable um, increases in the percentage of workers, and then also the, the decline in the um, reliance on expatriates. Something else on um, employment trends there. Um, not only are we seeing um, more quality um, residents being employed and more Kenyans coming into the organisation, we're also seeing them um, moving up into roles higher up the organisation structure as well. Um, just going back to community development, we have our four key priority areas, social infrastructure, livelihood enhancement, the health programs, um, and education through scholarships mostly. But a lot of investment um, in these areas. Um, social infrastructure, uh, we, to date we've either um, built, upgraded, or refurbished um, 45 schools in Kuala, um, ensuring that education facilities are the best they can be down there. Um, investments in health, Again, something we're very proud of, particularly the Magoni Health Centre, um, the Messamboni Blood Bank, um, in which we partnered with the county government to get up and running, the Lakoni uh, Maternity Wing, um, and an additional ambulance for Messamboni Hospital um, to help with healthcare. Um, again, you can see these programs um, tying into the Big Four agenda with universal access to universal healthcare. Um, and again, it's something our um, focus on, on health in, in our community development programs um, that we like to highlight as, as tying into the government's um, broader agenda. Um, livelihood enhancement, uh, there has been a bit of talk about this already this morning, but um, BASE runs a lot of um, agriculture-based livelihood. 
um, programs. We've helped to establish the Pavi um, Cooperative down in Kuala, um, which has over 2,000 farms and 4,000 acres um, available for planting. You can see some of the programs we run. The cotton program is something that's obviously very exciting. Um, directly links you into the, the big four agendas, manufacturing. Um, as trials are ongoing, the farmers are also particularly keen uh, with the sorghum uh, program that we're running. Uh, we've uh, signed an MOU, or the Parvi have signed an MOU with the local brewery um, that allows for those goods to have a market, um, thereby not leaving them on their own devices to, to find those markets. Um, just quickly running through health and education programs. Um, community health units are obviously an important component in getting health services out to the communities. Base supports, seven of those covering 46 villages down in Kuala. Um, scholarships are a big component, over 1,600 scholarships um, for students down in Kuala across secondary and tertiary. Um, and a school life program, which um, has been very successful, run through 25 schools, using sport as a means to keep kids in school um, and teach uh, behavioural programs. Clearly, we can't talk about mining without talking about the environment and how we're going about uh, managing impacts. BASE is um, convinced and believes and works on the basis that you can have a net positive impact um, through the mining program. We have a nursery, which we believe is the largest private indigenous tree nursery in East Africa. Um, close to 100,000 trees um, have been propagated out of our nursery, um, with thousands planted every year. So the next stage for base titanium um, is, to, is to explore and find ways that we can extend our mine life. We currently have close to five years remaining um, of mining. And to extend the benefits, to extend base presence in Kenya, we need to do some exploration and have been doing some exploration to identify um, additional mineral resources or reserves down there in Kuala. Um, we've had one successful, relative successful program to the southwest of our mining lease at the moment, um, which we've identified as a small extension to the mine, and further exploration has been taking place um, over the last year or so. I'm not sure how clear the map is up there, but you can see, excuse me, to the north, um, the existing SML um, and the, the green holes you can see are the drill holes that we've been drilling over the last 12 months. Um, and to the south where you can see PL um, 0042, that's a um, exploration or prospecting license application um, that we have in and we look forward to that being granted and we're going to start an uh, um, exploration program down there. Um, in, in the area of Vanga. It's a very, um, very brownfield um, license application down there. We're not certain um, that there'll be minerals, but BASE a number of years ago did fly an aerial survey over that area and picked up what the PS was talking about this morning, those um, geological indications that we, we believe it's quite prospective. So without taking too much more of your time, um, I'd just like to say that you know it, it's very impressive what the government and the ministry is doing, investing the energy and the money in this sector to provide more information through the aerial survey. Um, it really is um, noticeable how engaged the ministry is with their um, field visits all across the country. Um, they're playing a, a role in trying to broker through whether it's um, political deadlock or community deadlock, um, and for that we're very grateful. But. The driver of, of building this industry has to come through exploration. We have to get as many people into Kenya, um, the drill rigs turning, um, the results coming through, um, and working through that exploration stage um, and into mine development and mine investment. But ultimately, the industry isn't going to work unless we can find that balance um, of benefits between the investor, the government, and the community. And I think that's something that everyone in this room is very interested in finding here in Kenya. And BASE um, really feels that uh, the model that we've got, uh, it works to a certain extent. We always have challenges and we're always willing to hear new ways that the government or our other stakeholders are willing to um, share with us to find that balance um, to help us grow this sector for the benefit of the people in the country.
finally, before I go, please come and visit our stand down in the exhibition centre. Um, we'd love to talk to you all. If you've got any questions, happy to answer them there. Asante Sana.